Welcome to the Love and Victory Show with Val, the place to laugh, sip on a little wine, and have open and honest conversation. Here you will find the tools to resolve real life issues. Unwind, pour up a glass, and get ready to exhale. Okay, Val, sounding like a 90s voicemail. Okay, then, <laughs> say it again. <laughs> Did you like that? Yes, Val, after the storm. Oh, girl, you better know it. You better know it, huh? <laughs> well, again, I want to say thank you. First, I have to say thank you to this wonderful, lovely Christina a price you have you are truly an angel sent to me uh-huh. uh, I want to say the reason why I, you're such an angel is that you plopped down in my life on a Sunday afternoon you didn't know it was pretty Sunday it was not sunny for me at all that day is uh, you, God sent just who I needed to be in my space so I thank you for answering the call and just Absolutely. being there thank uh, you. and then who would have known just for that Sunday afternoon, I got to uh, engage and, and be sitting here on this platform with a phenomenal uh, woman, uh, Lala. Uh, yeah. I, I'm going to tear that up, too. Uh, I'm just so honored. Um, I, I, words don't even express. You know, when you're trying to start off and doing something and you don't, half of the time, you don't know if you're getting it right or most of the time you're getting it wrong and but you know God have you on this path and um, I didn't ask for this journey but I know he has me here for a reason and it's not just to play it's really uh, to be intentional about uh, helping someone so even though the music is a little jazzy it's all about relaxing and, and really knowing that we're going to be honest and candid um, so thank you I want you ladies I'm turning it over to you all for you all to Tell, tell my listeners a little bit about yourself and um, how did you get where you're at? And then we'll jump into the conversation. Let's start with you, Lala. Okay. Well, first, what do you call your listeners? Oh, well, baby, they're my candy babies. Okay. Candy babies. <laughs> hey, candy babies. Okay. <laughs> right, so Lala Malign. And how, let's see. Okay. So me in a nutshell, because I could go on for days. Go, go. Um, I am a entertainer overall so that's an umbrella to I do comedy online through skits um I am a CEO of a fitness brand I am black okay I'm proud and I am I do a little bit of everything you know my main thing that I love to put out there because I don't say it enough is I'm bilingual your girl speaks <laughs> espanol Okay. Okay. So that's <laughs> well, can we hear? Can we hear a little bit? Just a little bit. Sure. Okay. Ahorita estamos hablando en este podcast. Estoy muy feliz de estar aquí contigo y no puedo esperar para conversar. So, right now we're talking in a podcast. I'm super excited to be here, and I can't wait to conversate. Okay. Well, how can we say uh, the Love and Victory Show with Val in Spanish? Let me hear that. Okay. Come on. Uh, love and Victory. Uh, I would say La Presentación de Amor y Victoridad con Val. Oh, con Val. Okay. Say no more. Okay. Did y'all hear that? <laughs> she is bilingual. Go she ahead. is. Yes. Okay. All right. And you, Miss Christina, tell us about yourself. <laughs> well, my name, I'm laughing because I, I could go a lifetime without hearing live speaking uh, Spanish anymore. <laughs> Because uh, her favorite place to travel is to Mexico, so she can speak Spanish with the natives, <laughs> and it's just been an experience. Oh, it's god, it's definitely been an experience. It's, it's, it's an experience. I... Oh, god. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so it, take, it took me you. back when she, it took me back when she started speaking Spanish. So, but let's get back to it. Mm. <laughs> My name is uh, Christina Price. Uh, I am a makeup artist um, by profession. Recently, I transitioned. Uh, into baking, uh, more into the cannabis industry. And that's what I'm doing now, even though I'm still a makeup artist. Um, 36, uh, single mother, striving in life just to, you know, grow in different aspects, you know, physically, mentally, emotionally, uh, spiritually. That's one of my main things right now. So, you know, I'm just on a 
a path of just growth and not just in my profession, but just in life in general. So that's why I'm so happy to be on this podcast today just to speak about, you know, just women empowerment, women just growing and building um, in life. Well, you know, one of the things, and I'm just going to kind of jump in and you guys take the conversation how we want to take it. Um, Mm -hmm. One of the things that people tend to say, and I think sometimes we are guilty as women, and it's difficult for us to really support one another, or it it becomes catty. Why is it that uh, it becomes so catty with women? Why can't women just support one another? Or dude, maybe you guys don't even experience that. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know. I mean, a part of me being here on this show is because I support my friends, Mm -hmm. you know. Um, Mm -hmm. I think it's a case-by-case basis um, to which, thankfully, I can't personally speak on why I don't support other women um, because I love to, you know. I think it's very important to do so. I feel like um, when you're lifting up other women, you always have the potential to lift yourself up vicariously because you never know how far that slight push that you gave is going to push them. And they're always going to pull back, well, look back and bring you forward. Um, But if I had to guess, I would feel like um, it has nothing to do with that, the people that they're, you know, not trying to support, but more so with themselves. You know, I'm glad Mm -hmm. you said that because most of the time people that have an issue with someone else, it's not about the someone else. It's about the Mm -hmm. individual. Mm -hmm. And so Mm -hmm. it's kind of like Christina didn't know me from Batman until we connected. You surely Mm -hmm. didn't know me. But because you support your sister, your friend, it was like she asked something of you. There was no question. I'm going to be here. I got you. And I think that's what uh, sisterhood is all about. And so I'm just glad that you all have that bond that um, that also is something that gels with my spirit. Just I believe in supporting people and really those that don't want to support me wasn't supposed to be in my world in the first place. And so I don't spend a lot of time True. worrying about that because a lot of times, most of the time, when you're trying to drag someone along that's not supposed to be there, you're dragging trouble along. So mm-hmm. that's my thought. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All righty. So let's, let's talk about where you came from. Christina, as a young adult, before you got to this age, oh God, excuse me. Uh, before you got to this age, uh, don't answer, just, I'm, I apologize. I'm so sorry. The, That's the, okay. You got the hotline over there. I, girl, I already told my <laughs> busy. So when, <laughs> when you started off, uh, when did you start off in uh, doing makeup? At what age? Um, this was, I was, I think, 20. No, tw- like 21, 22. And I was working as a hairstylist assistant because I've always um, been interested in doing hair Mm -hmm. from high school and um you know i was doing that and i saw how you can become a makeup artist in the you know professionally Mm -hmm. and you can go to makeup school and everything like that as i was working i was looking through a magazine Mm -hmm. and i just did it but it was something that was always with me because my mom was like a makeup artist of the family okay so that was her thing and so it just kind of like naturally you know fell on me and i mean i've been doing it ever since then i think i went to makeup school and Oh, what was that? Um, oh, God, 2006. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. So you, yeah. it was just a self-taught thing until you decided to. Well, it was just like, I wouldn't even say self-taught. It was just like, you know how you just buy eyeshadow oh, okay. from Mac and stuff and you just put it on. But when well, I saw I the school, myself. I just immediately went to school. Oh, okay, okay, <laughs> okay. And Lala, how did you get started? Um, I got started when social, well, not social media, but when Instagram came about, you know, I saw, I found myself constantly being on there, you know, Mm -hmm. um, like most people, but for me, it's always been a thing of like, if you're always spending time doing something, you might as well make some money from it, Mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. Um, and so I was like, if I'm going to be on here scrolling, I need to go ahead and figure out a way to capitalize, right, you know? So right. I saw people doing comedy skits and I was like, mm, if I was to do that, I would do it differently, you oh, know? Mm, so I was like, okay. I'm make my own. And um, yeah, 2015, I went viral for the first time, at least on um, Instagram. And I just kept it going from there, you know, 
you pretty much so find... was this stuff that just kind of came to your mind or you just uh, did someone say hey try this or oh, how no. did that come about because you kinda... are funny as heck i'm sorry <laughs> <laughs> thank you it you is know... like a natural she's naturally like that oh my god <laughs> it's like i mean i could just sit there even before i mean you were already on my if you go back, you'll see how long I've been following you and had no idea it would come to this because mm -hmm. the first time I saw you, I'm like, she got to either be taking medication. Oh, she that got, part. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I'm like, this girl is <laughs> crazy. Is a good question. You say, is it, you know, does it just come to you? I was going to say, I think I'm a little off, you know. Okay, and I'm but like, <laughs> I didn't know how to say it in a good way because I was like, wait a minute, <laughs> nobody can be this. Funny yeah. and, 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 it, and it's just it just keeps coming and coming and coming. So I, is someone writing this for you, or does it just come off the dome? It just comes off the dome, and <laughs> it's sometimes too much to a fault because, like, I find myself laughing at like I got dark humor for real, but the internet's so sensitive <laughs> nowadays. Well, but let's hear, let's hear, let's see what kind of dark. No, humor. girl, it's not. No, I just laugh at sick stuff, like, <laughs> like, like, what? <laughs> Look, you know? oh, Christina, are you telling me don't push her? Don't push her. <laughs> 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 don't push it there. Okay. Uh -uh. I know we caught this. We the candid days and stuff, but I can't be too candid. Well, don't, I can't get canceled. So it's that dark. Oh no! Yeah. no. Oh, okay. It's well, not that dark. That that dark, but you know. What? Well, well, it, well, well, let's, let's just let's <laughs> just see. Uh, can I get about that much of it? Yeah, I'll tell you off camera. Okay. Oh, oh, okay. I can't wait on that one. Okay, okay, I'll wait. You're I'll, not going to laugh. I'm not going to laugh. Oh, I, I can't stand. I knew this was going to be. Okay, we're going to let you just keep going. You see, guys, you see what the treat we got for you guys today? Oh, my God. So this just came, it just comes off the dome, mm -hmm. and you just go for it. I do. I um, I have no shame in having a good time. I don't care about what people think. And I feel like that's what allows me to be so entertaining. You know, whereas other people would be so shamed to just let their hair loose, relax, and be themselves. I'm not afraid to do that, you know? Well, well so, so help take me there. Take this 50-year-old, 58-year-old woman. If today was the first time, well, it is the first time you met me, mm -hmm. what would you tell me? to just let it go just um well i i wouldn't even be a thing of me saying something say okay say i saw you from across the room we had a party something like that and you're just being quiet or something that i'm going to look at you i'm going to stand up and i'm going to come over there and try to get you to start dancing mm. you know what i mean okay um, so i'm already up dancing yeah you don't why have to we look up dancing now you're going to start feeling good because feeling good literally it's an emotion. And once people experience it, they enjoy it, you know? And mm -hmm. I feel like once I got a taste of making people feel good and how good it made them feel, and I realized that it made me feel good, I just kept it going, whether through jokes, whether through actions, whether through entertainment, whatever the case may be. That's how, I mean, that's how I keep it going. Just, you know? just keep mm -hmm. going. So my yeah. next question is, how did your family... And either one of you guys can jump in on this. How did mm -hmm. your family take it when you said, I'm going to take this career path? Did anyone say to you, why? I'll give you a prime <laughs> example. When I said to my husband, uh, I'm going to do a podcast, radio. He was like, what? I said, <laughs> literally, he said, what? Because I am a, um, I own VK Consultant Group, which is a, practice consultant firm that I walked away from corporate America in 2003. So 19 years in uh, nice. myself. And Congrats. I said, I'm going to do it for myself. So we, my husband and I started a nonprofit where we service people with disabilities. My son, uh, my oldest son, firstborn son, did three tours in Iraq. He went one way and came back another way. So that's been a whole a whole journey in itself. And we're still going mm -hmm. through that journey. So I needed to do something that was going to take some of this pain and frustration and put it in a good place where I can I feel like I'm doing something to help someone while God get him together so that when he comes full circle, we have something for him to come back to. So that's nice. when the nonprofit came about. 
And so the team said to me, well, Ms. Carter, why don't you think about doing a podcast as a way to get the nonprofit out? And I'm like, oh, okay, I figured they'll tell me, you know, every now and again they'll come say, not knowing anything about a podcast, oh, can you come speak, literally. Mm-hmm. And that's a year ago. And 30 days after I did that, I was contacted by a radio station that asked me to put my show on their radio station. And so I also have a radio show that I do every Saturday morning, and I just signed my second year contract with that. Congratulations. Won't, won't Congrats. he do it? Won't he yes. do it? Yes. So, <laughs> ain't it funny? And, and I'm forget, and girl, won't he do it? So I think <laughs> for me, I, you know, it's never a journey that you really map out. It's just kind of mm-hmm. something that God has already mm-hmm. planned out and it fell out, so fell in your lap. So, when I went to my husband and I said, this is what I'm going to do, he was like, oh, okay, podcast. He doesn't know. He's 60, so he's like, mm, podcast. Okay. Then when I came to him and I said, well, we're going to do a radio show, and you're going to be my co-host. <laughs> you know? So he was like, radio show? But that Negro enjoyed that radio show more than me. So I believe <laughs> girl, and he cuts up. So we call him Brother Carter. It's no telling what he's going to come out. Lala, you got to meet him because ain't no telling what's going to come out of Brother Carter's mouth. He said, I love that. He said he was going to put his three-piece suit on and come in here today and say, I'm Brother Carter. You don't need me to sit all. He was ready for you. You should have came up there. Yeah. Where you at? <laughs> Over there making the check. He at work where he need to be. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, the reason I brought that up and I said all of that, I guess that was a lot of talking. It's to say when you guys went to your significant other family member and said, this is the journey you're going on, what did they say? Did you get any pushback or did you get, hey, full steam ahead? When I told uh, my mom that I was going to go, you know, full time with social media, (laughs) she said, she said, why would you do that? That's Mm -hmm. stupid. She was like, you know, um, you got to make sure that you have retirement and you got to make sure you have all of those things. And it was new to her, you know, Mm -hmm. so she didn't understand, but I knew that if I didn't take that chance of, you know, living my dreams and trying to do it full time, Mm -hmm. that I will always live with regret, you Mm -hmm. know? And we joke about it now because she always says she did not get it, but now she be on social media so much. (laughs) She's you know surfing I mean? the web too, huh? Yeah, that was, I mean, that was seven years ago. So you got to think social media has changed mm. so much. Mm-hmm. People, nobody would have ever guessed it was going to be this yeah. big. Because right. if they did, they all would have quit their jobs and started, you know, trying to do social media full time. So um, the rat, but now though, I can say even my dad, he was like, he was like, what? Nobody understood. The traditional thing is go to school get a degree, which I had done. But while I, after I had a degree, I was working at a regular job and it just wasn't cutting it. You know, I, I realized I started making my monthly check in one booking, you know? So I was like, it, it doesn't make sense for me to stay here, you know? But um, now, like I said, they're fully supportive and they love it. So, hey. I think even for myself, it's hard to understand just how powerful social media is it can either make you or break you and even when they said to me that speaks I mean you're you're really talking right back to what I was saying when they said let's do a podcast that's how I'm like okay what is that not really understanding Uh what they were putting in front of me and even though I would go and scroll on Instagram and I would see the funny things uh and the different things that was going on I really wasn't understanding the full magnitude of Uh Instagram, social media. And so I think we have to evolve as it has evolved. But at the same time, I think social media, uh, if not used correctly, can take you just as fast as it takes you up, it can take you down. I agree. You, I agree. You agree with that? Absolutely. Ha- have you had some bad experiences with um, social media? Mm. From the standpoint of someone that may not have gotten your joke or may not have. Oh, all the time. All the time. So how do you deal with that? I don't. Uh, you know. There you go. Um, there you it's go. It's one of those things where when you're on a public platform, 
you're going when you anything that you put on social media is open to opinion, right? Mm-hmm. And opinions are like a butthole. Excuse me, but <laughs> I know don't for real. Mm-hmm. You know. And with that being said, everybody's not going to agree with you. Everybody's not going to understand where you're coming from. Um, And I feel like as long as you stay true to yourself and they judge you off of that and nothing else, it is what it is. You know, I can't please everybody. But, you know, Lala, you're you're so encouraging for me because I, I think back and, oh, God, I think the hardest thing for me even starting this thing off is that you expect starting off that you're going to get the support from your close circle. And, mm. um, oh, I guess you're going, oh, what I've learned. And so it, it doesn't always happen that way. What I've learned is, is that they're there, but I think that they're, they're waiting on the, and, and please correct me if I'm wrong, because I'll mm-hmm. just give even sometime family. You would expect mm-hmm. that they would be out there logging in, supporting, liking, and following. But you know that they're vicariously there, but it's also hard because you need to see them there. And so I had to go through this whole transition of just keep doing, just just keep your head down, drown out the noise, and keep doing what God has called you to do, and everything is going to work itself out. Um, or what advice would you give me? Because now you're, 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 in, the, you're in the game. Thank you. Thank you. You're in the game. (laughs) That's so funny. Okay. Well, first of all, um, it's a known thing that unfortunately support comes first from strangers than from everybody else. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, So in knowing that at the end of the day, you have to have a strong foundation within (laughs) yourself Um, and you have to be very understanding of the fact that, again, everybody isn't going to support you. But it's a question of how bad do you want it? Oh, right. So once you determine how serious you are about exactly what it is you're doing, you have to remember that the end goal is for you to reach, you know, exactly what you set out to do. As long as you keep your focus on that, nothing can stop you. I think that, you know, in my young 58 years, I've learned that very thing. But you guys are teaching me something completely different because it's almost like you have to not become an ice princess, but you have to become this person that says, I'm not sitting around waiting on someone else to validate me. And early on in my life, because of things that I've experienced in life that have, that were traumatic, as well as some just life growing up, I was sitting around waiting on others to validate me. The woman that I am, the full woman that I am, um, I don't need that anymore because I know what's for me is for me. And so I am truly on this journey so that I can really help women to understand don't waste so much good, precious time waiting on someone else to validate you. Uh Know who you are. Be good with who you are. And if they catch on, they catch on. If they don't, they don't. Just remember, whatever you're doing, you can live with it in the morning. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Uh, Very much so. Yeah. So so I want to ask you, uh, Christina, jump in there. Uh, Mm -hmm. What's your thought on uh, when you had to go to your family and say, this is the journey. Now I'm going to be traveling, doing makeup. And no, let's just talk about doing the uh, baking. How did that Come on. Um, well, I had conflicts in um, in both areas. First, starting off real quick with was the makeup, and it was so big because it was some from someone who was so close. It was my mom, even though they supported me with going to school to makeup school and everything like that. But she always thought that I would go back to college. Mm-hmm. And I'm just like, I just didn't feel it was for me. I wasn't comfortable there. I didn't know what I was going for. And so when it came up about makeup, she was like, well, what are you going to be painting people's faces all your life? Because back then they didn't know about professionally being a makeup artist, you know, in the entertainment industry. Right. And once I started to do more of that in that area of makeup, then she got to see it. When you saw me traveling and working with different people and, you know, just having access to a lot of different things. It's like, okay, now you see the vision. Then you see the money and it's like, okay, now I get it. Mm -hmm. But for years and for a while, she would, you know, say, well, what else are you going to do? As if it wasn't a real career, what I was doing, but I knew it was something that I was passionate about. I knew it was part of my ministry. Mm -hmm. Um, Just the way that it helped women. Cause that's one of the things that I'm big on. It's just like uplifting, encouraging 
women, you know, mm -hmm. people who don't get it, you know, you need somebody to play that role. And in makeup, I had such a um, great advantage to do that. Um, when it came to the cannabis industry, of course, that was a thing. You but... cut, you, it's like your Camry has you cut. I want them to see the full glory of you. Come on in here. Come on in oh, here. Oh, they're going to be able to see all of this. There you go. So there, oh. Now they need all of you. There you go, darling. <laughs> there you go. Here I am. Look, mm -hmm. there we go. There My you phone go. was slipping down. Mm -hmm. Yes. So when it came to the cannabis industry, it was the same thing. And the reason why I started that was because of the pandemic. And nobody was doing anything, no makeup or whatever. And a friend told me, you know, people are tired of sitting at home drinking. You know, you should bake because I like to bake just for the fun of it. You should bake some edibles. And I was like, I don't know. Mm -hmm. And uh, I tried it and it, it went crazy. It took off. Mm. And what happened was I was kind of skeptical about it because I was, you know, working for my pastor in the ministry. <laughs> and wait, wait, like, wait, 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 <laughs> wait. Did you hear? She said she was working with her pastor at high. The yeah. Lord Jesus. Yes. Okay, come on now. <laughs> Let's hear it. And I, I knew my heart and my intention wasn't to, you know, be selling drugs or to, um, you know, just get people high just for recreational use and mm -hmm. things like that. But it was more of a need, like so many people was having anxiety because of what was going on. It was something new. The whole world was shut down. Yes. You know, people couldn't sleep. It just was a lot of different issues that were going on with people um, personally. And so I just dove in and did it. And so when I asked him about it, I was like, you know, how do you feel about this? And he was like, you know, I'm okay with it because it was legal in areas of of some of his friends where they live at. And, you know, they were using it for medicinal use. Mm -hmm. And he said, you know, I know a lot of friends that use it and it really helps them and things like that. So he was like, you know, I'm good, daughter. And I was like, let's go. What? And after that, I was just running full crowd with it. <laughs> <laughs> well, My family was like... Oh, uh, wait, really? Until they started using it because they were the main ones that needed it. And just recently, my stepdad, he's 79 years old and he had cataracts and he don't really have a lot of medical issues. But, you know, as he's getting older, he's having more issues. And he just went to the doctor. He started using it because it helps really well with that. And um, oh, it does? he have glaucoma, glaucoma. I'm sorry, that's what it was. Okay. Yeah, and it kind of relieves the pressure off the back of your eye that glaucoma causes. So how do you know which one? And I'm sorry, Lala, this is mm -hmm. interesting. This no, part here, I'm here for it. Yeah, this part is really interesting. So how do you know what is, uh, so say you're sleep deprived, you know, mm -hmm. you can't rest, you can't sleep, but you don't want to be down. How do you know what, the, I mean, what would you bake for something like that? Well, there are different strands that you can use. And for me, I um, for what I use, that goes in mostly everything that I do. Um, it's about the portion, mm. okay. you know, um, cause it can, you know, be in, but it's in between. So it's really just about how much you take. Like if you just want to relax and mellow out or something like that, you just take a, you know, a little bit, you want to relax and you want to go to sleep. You want to be knocked out because you have to have like a, a full body sleep. Cause mm -hmm. a lot of us don't get that, right, but right. it do help. Um, for you to, you know, have a full, full good sleep to where you wake up in the morning and you feeling well rested, okay. you know, you take a little bit more. So that's what I try to help uh, my clients with as far as like dosing, like how much to take, you know, when is a good time to take it, you know, so it can run its course and different things like that. When do you know, and ladies, either one of you, I, I want to hear from both of y'all. When do you know you have actually reached success? Or the success in say, your mind, or the success in your goal. When when would you know that you've made it? The wild thing is, I think in the mind of most successful people, success is, I don't know if it's actually ever obtained. Because once you reach something and conquer what you thought you wanted, now you out for the next thing. Mm. You know? Yeah, for the next mm. um, So... Like a lot of people consider me successful, you know, I would say that I'm doing well, but I'm not done. So therefore I need more. <laughs> so could that be, you're just driven? Yeah. Driven. Um, I'm never, you're never, like, uh, you're never, um, just comfortable with just being, you just, you're I'm always, not. Okay. 
and I never will be either. Yeah, yeah. What about you, Christina? For me, it's a little different. Um, I do believe when it comes to pro professionally, um, it's always another level of success you want to reach. But when I know Christina and her own entity reaches success when I'm just comfortable in my own, I'm satisfied in um, the place that I'm in, uh, the things that I've done. Um, I'm seeing the more of the fruits of my labor mm -hmm. and I'm just like fully whole for me. That's success. That's success. And when, yeah. Mm -hmm, and when it can be like an influence to other people, when it's motivating to other people, then I feel that I have reached a level of success. Do we always want more? Absolutely. Okay. Well, I'm going to give you guys mm -hmm. a prime example and, and neither one of you all know this. So I was contacted, so now I'm doing this Women's Boss, boss Up Tour. And so uh, I'm really, really excited about that. Uh, Christina did my makeup. Uh, and I felt, when I tell you, I was just, no one can tell me when I got ready to go to the room. That's that, that going girl, to let me that. tell you, I was <laughs> like, hey, anybody had a problem, it was not me. But what I listened to that coming in, because I had some other stressful things I was dealing with, even, you know, I don't care what anyone says, you still have that, in, I, I like to call them, and I, and I don't like to give them credit, but those internal insecurities, because I knew mm -hmm. I was going to be sitting on this platform that was unfamiliar to me. And so what I did, Lala, I listened to some of you. And so Girl. I did. Yes, I did. And, and I, I, I did because I needed something. I was gorgeous. Sitting mm -hmm. with, with my girl, she made me feel like there was no one more beautiful than I was, mm -hmm. you know, and, and that she truly has a gift. And that's why I said to her, she can't put down the gift, that calling that she has with makeup because it's truly a ministry. And True. But I needed something else because mm -hmm. there was a battle that was going on. And so I needed to kind of laugh and kind of get into this place that I was able to block out a lot of things. And so, mm -hmm. well, I don't even know if I needed to laugh. I just needed something different. And so I went through my phone as I was trying to get dressed and you kept popping up on my timeline. And what you didn't know, Christina, <laughs> I hadn't mm -hmm. even mentioned anything to you. And we'll, we're going to talk about how I, you know, when I finally did get enough confidence to speak and say, hey, Christina, I need you, you know, uh, yeah. can you do this for me? And it, it's, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to hold back the tears because it's so true. Oh, stop. Um, okay, not today. I'm being, I know, <laughs> right. But, I, but I, I'm, I'm one of these people that are just, I'm so transparent. I don't have time to be fake for anybody. It is what it is. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm going through trying to just get something to get me into this place to walk into this room. I know I look good. I know that I am a strikingly beautiful 58 year old. And I like to keep saying that because people love to think when you get to a certain age, it's over. It's mm -hmm. not over. It's just beginning. Yeah. So when I say to you, I'm 58 years young, I mean that I am 58 years just starting over and over. You know, it's, you understand, I'm young. Yeah. I, God I still that. has a lot to do with me. And so I get in this room and I have to, my daughter's meeting me there and I feel like what I'm doing, everything that I'm doing, I'm setting a legacy. And it's never about just me. When I'm doing something, I'm very intentional about what I'm doing because either I can do it really, really bad and my grandkids can see me and be like, oh, my God, that's my grandmother. Or my <laughs> children, can, my, my grown kids can see me, and, and, they, and I would hope that they would say, oh, my God, my mama rocked that. You mm -hmm. know, or my husband can see me and say, you know what? After 43 years, that woman's still doing it for me. And so mm -hmm. I needed something that day because me and my husband kind of was in a little place because he wanted me to be one way. And I wanted something that day, and I had a whole bunch of emotions going on. And I know he's going to hear this, but, oh, well, baby, I'm sorry. <laughs> you know I'm honest. <laughs> so, so I listened to you, and there was a video, and you had them green shorts on. You, you know what I'm talking about? Let me see if you can go mm -hmm. out there. Well, I don't know. Anyway, you was up there doing this little thing, and you was, you, you was, you was just getting it. You was just getting it. And it was almost as if 
you had came alive with, I don't care what nobody think. I am going, it, it, it wasn't one of your put together. It was like, this is who I am, and I don't give a damn what nobody think. And that's exactly what I needed for that moment. And so, mm-hmm. I, so I had to get enough energy and enough strength and enough confidence up to say to my sister a couple of weeks later, you know what I need? I need, I need her. Mm-hmm. And uh, I need you. And I'm grateful that uh, she said, I got you. And so, I, you know, I don't know. I didn't know what I was going to talk to you guys about. Mm-hmm. I didn't know mm-hmm. how this conversation was going to go. But I did, and these people over here in this office is getting on my last damn nerves because they want me to answer all the, ask all these questions. I don't want to ask no questions. No, I just want to talk to my sisters. I wish I could see them over here. They get, they sitting over here behind this camera making all kind of faces hey, at me. Hey, y'all. Yeah, look, 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 look at her. Come on it's, over here. Just let them see you. Come on around, Chris. It's just me. She just so over here talking about, it. she giving me this eye. The other one's over there looking like, can you answer? Oh, so I'm going to ask. Now you got me curious about what some of the questions See, are. I'm going to give it to you. So let me just give it. Okay, one <laughs> says, what impact has the success of your career had on your life? Mm. That's a very good question. Uh, did you know what? Don't give them that kind of credit today. <laughs> Not today. A, it really is. Really it question. really is. And not only that, that's the first time anybody's ever asked me that on any platform so um, let's go with it yeah let's go with let's it let's go with so, it um first of all it has changed my life you know uh first and foremost i mean i am coming from living in a 700 square foot apartment in atlanta you know having 300 dollars left a month <laughs> trying to figure out how I'm going to get rich, okay? <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> Off my paycheck. Okay. So now I'm living in L.A. I'm, you know, for the most part, very successful compared to what I once was. And I'm living a dream that mm. I never even would have imagined. You know, a lot of times people be like, you know, did you imagine it getting this big? One thing that I've realized is that my dreams have always been so much smaller than my reality. Oh, you know, and I, I don't, I can't, I find that hard to believe because wow. anyone with such a big personality like you have for me mm-hmm. looking mm-hmm. and that's what most I'm looking from the outside. Right. I would imagine you always knowing, you know what? I'm going to knock that door down. I'm going through. I got this. You know what's wow. I never doubt myself. I just never know the outcome of what my big moves are going to cause. Mm. Okay. You know what I mean? Yes. Um, yes. So I know, I know what I'm capable of, and I do very big things. Mm-hmm. I just be shocked that it actually worked <laughs> in my favor. Okay. 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 <laughs> and you just be like, "Why were you shocked? Why like, were you? Why sh- you know?" Yeah. <laughs> And so, why were you like shocked? I, said, I don't really know how else to put it, but the life that I'm living today is I never would have imagined it for myself. And the crazy part is it ain't even done. <laughs> like it's really kind it's of just like getting it's started. Start, so yes. All I know is consistency yields results. Mm. That's it. Yeah. Can you say that one more time? I said consistency yields results. You heard what she said. She said consistency. <laughs> don't just come up here yeah, and think you're going to get it down. Out. Yeah, mm-hmm. don't think you're just going to come up here and hit it one time and think you're going to get what you're going to get. Part. It don't work mm-hmm. like that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, what mm-hmm. about you, Christina? Same question. Ooh. For me, it was just a point being proven to myself, first mm. of all, because I didn't come from a family of successful people. They didn't have businesses. They wasn't, you know, financially stable and things like that. And I remember uh, always dreaming big. Sometimes I thought it was too big so I was living in a fantasy land. Mm. And somebody told me this guy friend of mine, and I told him, I was like, you know, one day I'm going to be doing over makeup. Uh, I'm a Uh, something I said I was going to be doing big celebrities makeup or something like that and he was like that won't be capable for you he was like that just don't happen to you know just anybody 
And I was like, why not? I was like, look at Oprah. I was like, look what happened to her. Now, mind you, this was back in like 2006, 2005. Mm -hmm. And I was like, look at, you know, yeah. her. It happened for her. He was like, that don't happen for everybody. Oh, wow. But I'm telling you, years later, he had to come back and say, I apologize. He was like, because you're actually doing what you said you were going to do. And what it was, like I said, it was consistency. Even when you had other people telling you, no, that would never happen, or no, uh -huh. you can't do that. You know, even your mom saying like, well, what else you're going to do? All you have is what you feel in the inside. inside. You know, all uh -huh. you have is that drive in there and say, you know what? This is me. Like, and God confirmed it multiple times. It's like, I don't care who is saying what. This is what I'm telling you. And he will confirm so many different times. This is the path. And I just followed the path. So in and other words, it, mm -hmm. you just drown out the noise and you did what you had to do. Whether they you were going to. You. Yeah. 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 You just mm -hmm. do you. And, and I, that's the only way I can explain it because it's just, it just was me. It's me. What else am I going to do? I'm going to go be a nurse. Cause that'd be me doing you. I couldn't dare fathom in my mind. Like how to. You know what I'm saying? So I just did me and I just consistently did it blindly and everything. Well, but, I got something here mm -hmm. that they want me to ask and Miss Crystal keep hitting the, this question. So I don't know why mm -hmm. she keeps hitting this question, but she wants to know, they answered your question on how do you measure success? Okay, well, they want to know, okay, they want to know what is, she wants to know what is the most important lesson you have learned in life? since you've become successful? I could start that one. Okay. Go ahead, um, Christina. I got an answer, too. Mm -hmm. Never judge anybody. Never down, look, look down on anybody. Always treat people with kindness. Mm. And that's been the biggest thing for me in my career. Mm-hmm. I've got my biggest breaks, my biggest opportunities in the craziest way, but it was mm -hmm. just by me simply being nice to a person who I didn't even realize was that person I should be nice to. You know, they didn't have that particular title. My first, how I first got into the entertainment industry with doing makeup to where I was doing makeup for Megan Good and uh, uh, Melissa Ford. Come on, speak it, speak it, yes. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Was by a guy in the drive-thru of Wendy's with black guy with dreads, mouth full of gold. Mm. And I will always see him and I'm dressed in black coming from work at Mac. And he would say, um, one day he asked me, he was like, what you do? You always have black on. And I'm in the drive-thru with my mom. And uh, I was like, oh, I'm a makeup artist. I work at Mac. And he was like, well, my cousin, who's my roommate, he's the sound guy. You know, he works on TV, he works on TV and film or something like that. He didn't say he was the sound guy. He was like, he worked on movies and things like that. He was like, you know, give me your number. You know, I can pass the information along and have wow. him hit you up. You know how we think. Yes. Um, yeah. Right. Boy, he just boy, my number, yeah. Like, he's just trying to, whatever. Yeah. yeah uh -huh. He's just trying to never, not one time. I gave him my number cause I'm that person. Yeah. I couldn't easily not answer whatever. Right. Gave him my number. I kid you not. By the end of that week, I was on the set of a, a video girl movie that was being filmed in Baton Rouge because I had talked with his cousin. His wow. cousin was a sound guy. The sound, he's still a sound guy to this day. I just got off a show where he was the head sound guy. Hmm. And me and him still have a relationship. And this was in like 2014, mm. 2013, mm. something like that. And when I tell you, when I got to the set, the head makeup artist was somebody I used to work with in New Orleans. Wow. So she was like, oh, Christina, come on board. And I immediately started working on set. That was my first time doing a big production. Wow. Wow. And that That's was that the guy respect. never harassed me. He never. Being kind, being respecting kind. everybody mm -hmm. and not feeling yeah. like you're, you're the stuff. You know, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, okay, all right. But when you want something, you're open to yeah. opportunities, regardless of what their motives may be, because you just never know. So I mm -hmm. was hungry. Mm. So I was always open to opportunity because it's nothing to say, okay, well, let me see what you're talking about. Right. It's nothing to do that. Mm. It, it won't hurt me or mm -hmm. anything like that. Mm. And wow. I mean, that was, that was it. Wow. And, you know, of course, one thing led to another, another. And I have another story the same way. Wow. Bigger oh. level. Bigger level. Mm -hmm. Okay, Lala, mm -hmm. come on. And then we're going to come yeah. back to your bigger level. Go ahead, Lala. I love that. Um, 
I first of all, I want to say I absolutely agree. Um, and I have plenty of stories that's a testament to that, but yours was good enough. Um, <laughs> yes, it was. So, now, something that I would say that I feel like people do, which ends up hindering themselves, is understanding that you cannot take everybody where you're going, right? Oh, yeah. So oftentimes, because we have long-term relationships, whether it be friends, family, you know, lovers, whatever the case may be, Sometimes you want to take them because that's what you do out of love and everything like that. But those same people can hinder your growth. Mm-hmm. Um, they can potentially, you know, um, stop you because you're so focused on them. You're not able to focus on what you have going on, things like that. So understand that you're helping so many more people a lot of times whenever you fight your way to the top first mm-hmm. and then choose, you know, to bring other people with you, you know? Um, And I hate to say that, but I had to learn that. You know, people, I would try to help so many people so fast when they thought I was successful, you know? And I was, I was taken from myself. And I was like, dang, like, this is too much. So I had to cut those ties in order to keep going or else I would have stopped, you know? And then if I stopped, who going to do it? Because y'all ain't going to come back for me. Well, you know what? It's so funny you said that because sometimes that is the scariest thing to do, but it's such a needed thing to do. And I had to learn that in my VK business. You know, I remember when I first started, I wanted to bring everybody along. I was so excited to be in this this arena to be able to I own my own business. I got this going on. So I want to bring everybody along. Well, shortly thereafter, I found out, girl, you will go no further trying to drag everybody along because everybody along everybody doesn't deserve nor are they called let's just say mm-hmm. that to be on that journey and so you have to I had to learn the gift of goodbye and still love and you, you you understand what I'm saying absolutely you know just learning the gift of goodbye I know that this conversation is kind of went a little longer than uh and and I will not dishonor your time or um or take it for granted, but I really feel that you have so much, you guys have so much to offer mm-hmm. my listeners that are thinking about getting out there, that are struggling with their own internal issues, their own mm-hmm. things, especially women. We struggle with people wanting validations from other people or questioning whether or not I should be in this arena or if I deserve to get this or should I go. I'm going to ask you, Lala, what would you tell some young lady that Mm -hmm. is really struggling with, um, am I good enough? Do I deserve to be in this place? What would you tell them? If they're listening to you right now and they're on that cuff of Mm -hmm. trying to figure out, should I go or should I stay? Should I, why should, why would they look at me? Why am I, am I talented enough? Okay. Well, I'm going to say, first of all, sis, you are very much so good enough. Because if you weren't, you wouldn't be there in the first place. Mm. Okay. And also, now that you are in that water, girl, you better start swimming. Mm. Okay. Because at the end of the day, every everything happens for a reason. You know, we're met with obstacles so we can overcome them and gain a new level of you know, confidence. And in that, if you're not scared as well, you're not growing. So take this as an opportunity of growth and add it to your foundation that you're building and push through. You got this. You got this. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to ask before we wrap this thing up, because I can go all day with you guys, but you know, time (laughs) won't let us. So (laughs) I'm going to ask, I need my Lala. To mm-hmm. give me some of exactly who you are, the candid of you. We're on the candid conversation. Uh, that part. So that part right there. Who give our listeners something that they can just go home. Well, actually, when they get off it, they are bent over, broke up, but broke mm-hmm. up with joy and laughter. Give it to us. 
Oh, you know, you want me to say a joke. I, I just want you to be you, because here's what you don't do. I don't know if you realize it. I don't necessarily know if it's a joke. Or if it's just you, because I told you it's just you. <laughs> so, you so I don't. So for me, you know, no shade. I literally, it's just so. It's just. I mean, God, it's just who you are. <laughs> I'm sorry. I feel like I've been knowing you forever, girl. Girl. <laughs> um, it's so funny. Mind you, you're talking about give you some of me. This whole interview has been me. I know it has. Thing. Literally, it has. You know, People see me online and stuff like that, and yes, I'm silly. Um, but there's so many other parts of La La that people don't know, and I feel like, to be honest, you got the rawest part of me. You well, know what I mean? Can I be very mm -hmm. honest with you? Give it to me. This interview is so much more than I could have imagined, mm -hmm. literally, because I don't think anybody gets to see you just being this. That part. I think what mm -hmm. everybody has seen you is they've seen all of this. Mm -hmm. And that's the, the part, part that they like, this. But mm -hmm. if they get to know you in this, they're going to love mm -hmm. this. But I want to say, maybe it's for me. Maybe I'm being a little. I need some of that to go home with. Give me some of that other stuff. Well, girl, you could find it online. Oh, on my I can't stand <laughs> her. I just, I just can't. Respectfully, you know. No, I know um, you're not standing like, in a bad way. I literally, like, mind you, this whole time we've been talking about, you know. Yes. Talking, uh, you ain't give me nothing to go off of. So I oh, okay. Well, I'll give you something. My there. man, the guy. Like, you, you, okay, well, let me give you something. This, this hubby of mine. For, he keep blowing up the phone because he want a phone number to call somebody. He know I'm in here recording. He know mm -hmm. I got a lot of stuff going on. But he's like, mm -hmm. focus on me. You get what mm -hmm. I'm saying? <laughs> focus on me right now. Baby, baby. Mm. See, ah. this is your husband. And so I love I him since 1978. It's not yeah, bad. Christina, but it's not bad. She yeah, say it's no, crazy. It's no, here's the thing. Here's the thing. You, what you got and what your experience is the good stuff mm -hmm. that we, you know, pray to experience versus the things that we experience oh. on the flip side. So she going to give me something. Okay, well, okay, he good. Let me tell <laughs> so, y'all, he good, but right now while I'm you working. You ain't got to deal with the man making you pay for his own pizza. Oh, no. <laughs> his pizza? For his pizza. Yeah, it's some nigga. <laughs> you got to pay for his See. pizza. Like that. Yeah, let me put so my stuff on your it's tab. one of those things to where like you gave me something, girl. That ain't nothing. Okay, well, how about let's get you. like okay. tell me about him not showing up at home or something. Then oh, I can run it down. Like, I don't have that. that. How about you ain't how about, me nothing. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay, it's okay. Okay, okay <laughs> so let's get let's let's do this here. What would you give a young lady mm -hmm. that's trying to hold on to a man that's mm -hmm. been gone a long time ago? And ain't been, mm -hmm. he's been in the house, but he ain't doing mm -hmm. nothing for you. What would you give him? Okay, see, what now that's a her? different story. Uh -huh. First of all, most of these men be having dirty draws, okay? <laughs> they don't have to take care of themselves. Wait, wait, They're girl, I can't holler stuff. like that. Don't do that. Well, I needed to get so, ready no, for you. you ask me, let me run it down, okay. right? So they, they are bare minimum, right? And I can't stand to see these young girls crying over dudes that don't even bring nothing to the table. Sis, you got him at your house, standing up under you. All he's doing is piping you down, let's be honest. And you can get that from anywhere. So, with that being said, send him and his street drawers that probably got holes in it because these niggas really be dirty <laughs> on somewhere else and go ahead and give your business opportunity as many chances that you gave to him. So, ooh, mm, okay. Ooh, okay. <laughs> so, in other words, that part, that, that part one, just right there. So the Negro, uh, or whoever he is, mm -hmm. that is holding you back, that don't really have time for you, he really ain't worth your time. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Ten times out of ten. That's it. Okay, then. Well, I want to tell you guys, thank you for having my Lala and my Christina. Nobody can do it better. I just want to thank all of my listeners if any of you guys uh, want to know uh, anyone on the show, you can follow them. Lala, tell them you how they can follow you on your social media. You can find me at Lala Milan, which is L-A-L-A-M-I-L-A-N. If you're interested in gaining weight or getting in shape naturally through protein, gym, and diet, 
Um, you can follow my fitness page, which is at Fit Girl Buy. We specialize in growing peaches, aka ASS or glutes, you know. Um, so yeah, La La Milan everywhere else, Fit Girl Buy if you're into the fitness part. Okay. And how can they find you, Christina? For me, if you want to go to my personal page, you can find me at on Q No Makeup, O N C U E N O M A K E U P. Now, if you're looking for something a little different and you need my help and assistant assistance, you can follow me at Happy Day Treats. Um, yeah, Happy Day Treats on in both on Instagram. Okay. And then. if you need a little bit more information, just DM me. Well, thank you so much for having me. Seriously. Thank you. Thank you for having me too. Thank you guys for just accepting the honor. And I I look forward to our Sunday brunch, maybe soon. I don't know if I'm going to be in LA or if I'm going to do it here in in Houston, Mm -hmm. but I'm looking forward (laughs) to it. Thank you guys. And I love you guys. And until next time. I love you too. Thank you. Thank you, love. See y'all. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.